Welcome back to another episode of me trying to figure out what to work on for the Corolla. Today, it's still gonna be steering. What my plan is, is get the steering column nice and secure to the steering, uh, steering mount that was on the old steering column. So get that secure, but with that, once I get it put in there and it's kind of sturdy, then I'm going to start trying to work with a few uh, steering linkages or joints or whatever and get it to turn the MR2 steering, uh, steering rack. There we go. So that's the main goals. And once those are done, then I can start looking at some of the bigger things that are going to be needed for this car to work properly or what I hope is properly. <laughs> With that said, let's get to the steering, steering mount and steering column and talk specifically what I'm gonna try and do there. So for the first part, what I'm planning on doing is getting the measurements from like the bottom here where the mount is and probably up to this lip right here. So just take some cardboard take that measurement and make a brace or some form of bracket around there that I can weld up to there, duplicate it on the other side and weld it up. Well, after cardboard and make the metal bracket, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, that's the plan. Instead of boring you with some time lapse from a shaky person for very minimal stuff, I'll just be back when it's done. So, see you shortly. And here we are with the last thing that I needed to make to put the steering column mount thingy. So yeah, just a plate like this on both sides. And then I welded this in just to keep it, you know, at the right size. Cause one part of uh, this side. This side goes out a little bit, so I still welded it up, clamped it flat because it has a slight angle, then bolted it in. And I figured welding this plate right there just to hold everything it needs to be. I'm hoping that can more or less be the final iteration. I don't know if I'll need to change anything else or whatever. So... I'm going to go clean this up and then we will be back with it installed in the car and a quick look and then we'll go from there. Okay, the second time you are all going to see the steering column actually mounted up. But with that, you get to see a little bit more in the darkness I'll try and show lightness so late later in the video but yeah for this thing to go kind of straight or slightly angled looks like it's gonna have to go a little lower than the original opening but then I've got to figure out yeah sorry about moving the camera away so it looks like I could have some space there without chopping into like the frame up front but i will have to see so with that i will probably coming up in a you know 20 30 seconds start working on how to run that pipe through or run the drive shaft through or whatever steering column words use them and start trying to figure out if I have enough room to at least lightly mock up the steering column all the way to the steering rack. And if I can, yay, yeah, great. Then we'll move on to uh, something. Either exhaust or just pulling the engine out and going with it. Because it looks like the drive shaft might be going low enough that I won't have to worry about exhaust interference. So yeah, we'll see, be right back. Oh, and one more thing 
because I just remembered recently. So if you notice, it's got a lever here for tilt adjust and things like that. Obviously hard mounting it here and there. Well, actually I don't think it's hard mounted back there, but that's neither here nor there. I think in this video, I'm also gonna make a junkyard run where there's a Yaris and just take things apart to figure out how the adjustment system is working in the Yaris and see if there's a simple way to get it all to work. If not, well, might have to adjust things later because I don't know if I'll fit. I mean, I'm a big boy, so who knows? But yeah, hopefully we'll make a junkyard run and just get an idea of if that's possible without me overdoing or overhauling everything. So yeah, that is how you can mount that steering column fixed. Anyway, we'll be back with, uh, yeah, the investigation part here. Hooray! Here we are, back to square one. And yes, I did change my course of action of how I was gonna approach the steering thing. I started looking at everything. It was just like, I don't have the hands to try and make shit work in a little area. So I decided it's a good time to yank the engine and transmission out. One to just see if my uh, trans cross member, you know, held up just by holding the weight. But also, it's approaching winter. And I feel like I'm probably going to blow too much money and try and gather most of the parts I'm going to need for getting that engine, like replacing gaskets, replacing timing belt, wiring, powder coating, yada yada. So, good time to take it out. With that said, let's just give a quick look over. See, you know, while a little clunky looking, I could clean it up and I might... The cross member did appear to at least hold up for a functional test. Um, I'm glad I got it out so I can get rid of all this stuff on it from doing all the work. But yeah, it came out pretty quick. It'll be interesting to see how it all uh, comes together when I button up everything. So as you saw, I mean, there's a gap there I'm going to have to fill in between new sheet metal and old. And then I'm going to have to, yeah, there's a lot of metal work to have there. And hopefully I'll do it well enough. So yeah, with that said, let's show you. So this area here, I'm probably going to cut out. Or no, no, sorry. This is where I can't go to. So. This area is where I'm gonna finagle the, the steering column and see if I can get through and connect it here with good angles while the brake pedal is in there and won't have interference. That's what I'm hoping for. And what I'm gonna do is come back with either an idea or a solution. I don't know, we'll find out. But yeah, let's get going. So, before I get into trying to make this steering, I figured I'd show you guys the pieces I bought to try and make this work. <clears throat> so, all I've done so far is cut the boxes open, haven't looked. So, what I believe this is supposed to be is the coupler or the joint for the original AW11 uh, steering rack. So, if I can, <clears throat> oh, of course, I didn't bring, grab my razor blade. Oh wait, maybe don't need it. Okay, next up. Okay, so, 
<laughs> 92 to 85. I think they're going the wrong direction with the ears, but whatever. So let's open that up. So nothing special, just a joint, a little stiff, but I'm going to guess this is the opening that I was un unknown on. I tried to look things up, couldn't find things. So that's what's in this box is what I think this dimension is. So yeah, here's to hoping. So next up from Speedway Motors, I'm hoping that's clear. Uh, you know, one second, let me uh, close the garage in a minute. Okay, we're back. And judging by the camera screen, it seems like we got a little better lighting. Sorry, it's a gorgeous day out, so I kind of wanted to have the garage open. With that said, that's supposed to be like an OEM part. So yay, great. This is from Speedway Motors. It was a random guess of which place to buy through. And I did get the stuff here reasonably, so. Ah. <clears throat> I don't do unboxing. Wait, see this box? See the size? Here's some padding. That is literally it. That seat really seems like a lot of waste, but whatever. So we have a double joint. These are expensive. I can't remember, it was like 150 whatever. And I probably didn't need to buy this. It's 5 8 with 36 teeth to 3 whatever. It was supposed to be 3 8 or whatever. So I'm hoping this is useful. But if I get the car steering with whatever parts I bought, I'm going to be okay with that. Then we have another little piece. Um, 5 8 36 teeth. I'm really got a bad feeling about some of it though. And what we have here is a single joint. Well, whatever. Uh, D, I think. A D. Sorry, this is all new to me. So I am guessing as I went. And let me open this part. This was like some D-shaped thing, whatever. So I figure I'd buy a rod like this, something I can cut down. Um, I'm not sure if I bought everything I really need, honestly. This one is 36 teeth, uh, whatever size. But I figure if I can use this, this has a bolt that, or yeah, a bolt that secures it down. So, I don't know, I have ideas. It's guesswork. Uh, I'm hoping some of this works if I recall. Yeah, so this thing is also meant for this rod. So, I'm, what I was thinking when I got this is I can maybe connect one side to the to the steering column and then the other side with the d end or you know whatever this rod is called connect to there but i oh okay i remember some of my idea i bought this first but then i started looking up other things and bought other stuff so optimally this would connect to the steering rack this side would connect to the rod. And then this double joint that has like 70 degrees of operation would connect to the steering column and the other end of this rod. Is any of it gonna work? I have no clue. But we're gonna give it a try, see how close I can get, and then figure out if I can make it work or just get another uh, like one other joint and make it work. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm going to start guinea pigging now. And I'll be back with the results. Well, 
we've got a little bit of progress here. So this is the coupler that goes on the back of the power, the electric power steering pump. Took it off and there was a little key marker on it. Pretty sure meant for steering wheel alignment. And turns out both the pieces I got can work for this. So that's promising, which means theoretically I can be using this to reach to the column or to the steering, be, be, be. steering rack. That's the proper word. So got a little bit of progress here. So the biggest thing I've got to figure out now is the dimensions of the original coupler or yeah, joint, whatever. From what I can measure, it's a 9 16th with 36, uh, 36 spline, I think. All I know is that it is not, it is smaller than what the Yaris has. So I gotta figure out a way to make something like this go to the other one. So I might have to buy another part. I am not sure, but we'll find out when I come back. And we're back with no progress. Uh, I'm not quite sure how this little segment's gonna go, but I'm gonna just bitch and moan for a minute and probably come back with a solution or I may post a video before this one just asking opinions or if anyone's ever had to fiddle with this. So here's where I am with the collection of parts and I seem to have, no, I haven't. So I thought I'd measured that thing well and I came up with 9 16 32 spline. Turns out that's this part still not the right size. I thought I had measured well. I mean, you, you can, there's no way that's going to work. So I did a quick Google search on like 1736 or whatever. Just could not find anything. It seems like everything is like five eighths, three fourths. This is the OEM one. What I am contemplating now, since I am not sure I can actually find a replacement that would go to like 1736 or whatever this actually is, out to a generic. So what I'm contemplating is either A, trimming this up, see if I know anyone with a lathe or something to round it out, and then maybe drill some holes into the side to be able to secure it because, you know, if I got someone to lay that, there's no spline. So it needs some way to kind of fix it. But that's one of my ideas. I'm going to be trying, you know, just trying to figure out some other possibilities because I'd really rather not weld onto this. I, I would like everything to just be something I could take apart, put back together. And my goal during this was to try and make it just all parts you could buy and make fit. But the manual steering rack seems to be the pain of this equation. So I'm gonna contemplate some things. And if there was a previous video, you know, thank you. I still, I don't, I have no, I, no idea what the hell I'm doing, but you guys know that. So we'll be back very shortly. And we have a solution potentially that I'm going to try and use. I'm hoping it works. This is a 5 8 steel rod. And it's like a few feet. Uh, yeah, 5 8 I took it onto the Ryobi 
that you can kind of see right there for grinding. And I first started with trying to match up here. Do, do, do. See, fits. What my plan is, because I'm pretty sure I've got it pretty smooth around, but there might be some edges that this grips onto. But what I'm probably gonna do, don't hold me to this, but what I may do is mimic, you know, the aftermarket ones you get. I might just drill a hole onto the back here into the rod just a little bit and then, uh, you know, just drill a hole enough, widen it out and get uh, like a little, whatever those things are called, little screw type thing, whatever. Get one of those in there to kind of lock it in place, even though this might do everything I need to. I don't know. This is a lot of guinea pig for me. Feels cringe, but feels like it should work. I'll find out. Someone might give an idea better, but the whole reason for this idea is so that if any of the other pieces go out, theoretically, keep this in place. I can always just buy an MR2 joint. Always keep this piece around, just get it nice and sturdy. What I'm gonna do now, is grind this down a little, not as much as the top. And that should fit this end. Like this rod isn't that far off from uh, fitting it normally, it feels like. And then I'll either use this like that, or I might go this double joint thing, just give me all the angle I need, hopefully. I don't know. Because, yeah, if it fits on that side, can use the d double D bar on this end to connect up to da, 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 this. Because that's the D, double D. Anyway, I'll be back. And if I'm lucky, you'll see a bunch of pieces connected. So, be back. And here is another update. This is the adapter piece. If you look, if my shaking doesn't impede enough, there's just a slight difference in size from one edge to the next. And what it will be doing, as I think I said before, small end's gonna go in there, big end is going to go in this piece, and that does go further down. So what I'm hoping is with that joint, the joint on top and the joint there, that I can just chop a small segment of that bar, the double D, and make the steering work. There will still be more modifications to this to try and make it more secure, but this is where I'm at. So I'm gonna do some finagling and if it works out quickly, we'll be back with working steering. If there's more finagling, well, you'll see what comes up next. So yeah, be right back. Here we are, prototype one or draft one or whatever. Could work. I did a test that I forgot to record. I have zero like stability. You know, nothing to lock this, lock it down right now. So, you know, gonna have this whole thing Wobbling around, this, that, all the joints. So if this is the path I go, what I need to do is probably make some form of bracket or something to kind of hold this in place. Or maybe on the inside, make something to hold the splines right here. Like just hold them right there. Secure, no movement. Not sure, but as I'm looking at it, I'm not sure I'd have the needed angles because I'm contemplating taking the double D piece that I have because this is just four inches 
and maybe making a longer one to go to where this joint is, but then rounding it out so it can actually fit in there, kind of as a test. I am not a hundred percent sure, but it seems like a reasonable path to, you know, give a shot to. So yeah, I'm gonna make that piece real quick, see how that pans out, because I feel like it'd probably be better to have a little less of these U-joints if I can keep uh, the angles to a minimum that the U-joints have to go. Because if I replace this bar, removes one U-joint, might give this a little more security. I am not 100% sure, but I figure I've got the material, Let's give it a shot. So, be right back. So, here we are at the, like, 90% mark, 95, I feel. So, I've created two solutions to potentially work. Seems like they will both steer the car and not really have any binding. But I've got to order a part. A steering shaft, carrier bearing, whatever something to actually hold one of the connections in place. I'm going to order two carrier bearings, one that would fit for the 5 8 36 spline, so it'd probably just be a 5 8 and slide through, whatever, or a 3 4 double D carrier bearing. First solution is this one that this goes into the U-joint on the steering rack and, you know, connects up with this because this would go on the drive shaft or the steering column shaft, whatever. This would go on and connect to that. Or we got this solution, which I may keep. We'll find out. But I was able to turn the car like, this is not how I'd implement it. I still need one more piece, but for this part, but I figure I'll show it now. So what I will do if I go this solution is on this piece on the back here, I'm gonna drill a hole through that would support, you know, these little things. Oh, whoops, probably good to put the camera on it. So drill a hole, thread it, get one of these, and then, yeah, drill a hole through here that would also hit this rod under there as a, you know, way to thread in and grip this so it doesn't turn. Doesn't seem to turn at all, but I don't feel comfortable with the idea. I don't have any splines on that. You know, I did this bolt and it snugged the hell out of it. So... You know, that grabbed it just for this little test run. And I feel like it can work, but if I can put one more, like, stud behind it and hold it, should work well. Long term, if I could, you know, ever have the money and talk to, like, a fabricator so or a shop that could make that with splines, that'd be great. But most of my builds, I prefer to be something that, you know, I can do just in my garage and if anyone else you know just wants ideas they can use it with that said i am an idiot i screw up lots of things do it at your own risk this is at my risk not not my fault if uh you do the same and screw up because who knows i could be dead by then <laughs> screwed up so bad that i killed myself in a car but with that said I know there's probably a lot of opinions on how it could be better. State them. But right now, I'm just going with this. Right now, there is no plans on driving this car for till next year. All I'm trying to do is get the engine running. If I'm lucky, I'll get a rear end in there this year. That's all guesswork. But thank you for watching. I don't know how long this video is. Hopefully, it's not too painful. Anyway. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Have fun. Bye-bye.